All right, now we're recording. So welcome everybody. This is a training for uh, Boss Nail Babes and it is on nail bars, particularly Facebook nail bars. Um, and it's just 101, okay? So this is for you if you have not ever had a nail bar or if you think your nail bar sucked and you wanna like know what other people are doing. I am not sharing anything that I necessarily thought of on my own. Um, this is just the knowledge that I have of being in the business for six months, doing several, several parties, and um, like what I've learned that works and what doesn't. Um, and then also kind of, just to kind of get you started, some things that I wish I would have thought about in the beginning that I learned as I went on. So when I do any training, I kind of like to keep it uh, short and sweet to what we're focusing on. So we're going to be focusing on five things today, okay? So these are the five categories that we're going to talk about. And then at the end, because I know even though I said it was a prerequisite for learning how to use Facebook to create groups, etc., cetera, um, even though I kind of said, you know, like you need to figure that out on your own more or less. If you'd like to, and we have time, um, I can stay and I can show you um, kind of like a, a brief overview of how to create, create your own party in a Facebook group, okay? So here are the five topics that we're gonna talk about. Nail Bar 101 is number one. We're gonna talk about why you wanna do nail bars and how that can be lucrative to your business. It is definitely an income earning activity for sure. Um, number two is coaching. You don't just create the nail bar and then think everything's going to be hunky-dory. You have to do a little bit of work on the front end with your hostess to get them um, really, you know, one, knowledgeable and prepared, um, and two, really excited so that excitement will spill over to their guests. And then uh, number three are the resources. I'm going to cover a few resources tonight that um, have been helpful for me and thankfully are free, so that's awesome. And then number four is the timeline. I did post in the event group today a little um, like checklist I just made up today, and I did it out of necessity for myself because I needed that checklist. I had just kind of um, kept track on my own in different ways, mostly in my planner. As you guys probably know, if you know me, I use a planner. Um, but I thought maybe it would be good to just kind of see it all on one page. So that's in the Facebook event. It's, it's linked there. And last but not least is the closing of the party. Not necessarily how does your host place an order. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is flipping your hostess. I'm talking about loving on your new customers that your hostess brought you. Um, you know, maybe booking some nail bars with them if you haven't already. And really just doing the follow-up. Uh, the, you may have heard the fortune is in the follow-up and it is absolutely true. So those are the five topics that we're going to talk about tonight. So number one, why? Why do you want to do Facebook nail bars? Well, because you're going to exhaust your friends and family, right? You're going to exhaust your friends and family fairly quickly. You're going to exhaust your VIP group fairly quickly. And then you're going to hit that plateau and you're going to be like, well, crap, what do I do? Um, if you don't wait for that plateau and if you're brand new listening to this right now, and you get started, I recommend that every newbie books at least one nail bar as their launch, of course. And then I would suggest to book two up to five, depending on how ambitious you are, um, two to five nail bars within your first 35 days. Uh, the reason why you want to do that is obviously our Jumpstart program offers five, um, what am I trying to say? $50. I'm going to say $500. That'd be pretty awesome. Um, it offers $50 of product credit when you reach $1,000 in sales. And so what better way to get to that first jumpstart than by having other people help you do that um, by placing orders on your website through nail bars. I'll tell you that about 70, maybe 80, I'm estimating here, uh, percent of my business on a monthly basis comes from my nail bars, not from my VIP group, not for my closest friends and family, but from pretty much people that I just really don't know at all or acquaintances that I just don't know very well. I also, preparing for this, I um, was looking at my personal recruits. Half of my personal recruits, I did not know before starting this business. So that's, if that isn't, you know, a reason enough to be brave and host a nail bar, get yourself organized and follow these tips that we're going to go over, I don't know what is. Um, definitely it is worth it to get yourself out there in front of other people. And, um, so that would be with 
with our number one reason why uh, you want to do that is sales, jump starts, grow your team. Okay. So coaching. Um, when you go into a nail bar, obviously, let's go over this if you are brand, brand new. Uh, what I do for my nail bar is I create a separate private group for my hostess, or if I'm doing a battle, which this is not about battles, but there are other trainings out there um, for my hostess or my two hostesses if I'm doing a battle, one group, so that everything goes through that group. It's their own, it's private, and like Ashley has said before, and I've said before, what better way to flip your hostess if you are interested in building a team than to already have all of their friends and extended family in one group that makes it very easy to launch their business. Um, and so, yep, you just create that private group. And then before you do that, you, before you add in your hostess, you have to load it with some things and you have to coach your hostess. So, um, some things that you want to do, you want to make sure that you're aware of is that you don't want to just like, if you find some verbiage or I don't know if you've been a hostess of another type of party where they like text you this, like, Blech, long, you know, they copied and pasted it. It is not personal at all. And, um, sometimes they need, and I, and I'm saying this because I did this. Okay. In the beginning out of necessity, I didn't really know. And I was just like, well, let me just type all my thoughts. Well, that doesn't work. Okay. People don't read it. People don't read it. So one, you could record a video. People will probably watch you on a video. If you have like a two, three minute video about your party, that's, I mean, two to three minutes, you could do that for every hostess, or you could do a general one. That's fine too. Um, try sending a voice message. But what I try to do now, and what I've learned um, through actually one of the resources I'm going to talk about tonight, is having a volley. So like volleyball, right? Like the ball goes from one side of the net to the other, right? Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. When you're communicating with really anybody, it's natural to have that volley. You don't want to have someone dominating the conversation, right? Well, kind of like I am right now, but this is a training, so that's different. But when you're actually having a real conversation with people, you want to give them some information to think about, maybe some graphics um, or the hostess rewards, then ask them a question. For example, it could sound like this, you know, hey, Danette, I am so excited about your party. I know that you said July was a great month for you. Um, what's better for you, a weeknight or a weekend? Question, stop talking, send, okay? Or if you're on the phone, whatever. Most of the time, most of us are texting or on Messenger, right? Okay, then she's gonna reply. Oh, I prefer weekends. Okay, great, Saturday or Sunday. Boom, ball's in her court. And yes, that might take more time to get the information that you need, but I will tell you that I would say, argue to say 100% of the time, you're going to get someone that's going to be engaged. You're going to also build a relationship with that person, which is critical to the success of your party and the future of your business. Um, and they're going to not feel like you just copied and pasted something um, that they have to sit and read through. Okay. So th those are my suggestions. Um, definitely keep it a volley back and forth. Okay. So let's say she picks Saturday. All right. Typically, depending on their time zone, uh, typically I do my parties at 5 p.m. or 7 p.m., which was, which is better for you and your friends. She'll answer. Okay, great. Now you've booked it, right? Um, which goes to the timeline and you can see that on the event. So I'm just, my whole point here is don't blast them with a lot of information. Um, but that means that you need to be clear on what you need to know. So if this is your first nail bar, you probably want to write down like, and use the checklist to help you that I posted in the event. What do I need to know? I need to know if you follow the way I do it with, it's just a one night live party. I need to know what time that party is. And I need to know, um, you know, what day of the week, blah, 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 all these things. I need to know, um, if she has a preferred, um, method of communication. Would she like me to call her on the phone? Would she like me to message her on Facebook? All of these things show respect for your hostess and not that you're just using her to get sales. Because I mean, like, let's be honest, we kind of are, right? But we really want to take that service mindset and see like, how can we help them? Um, and another question that you might ask them is what her goals are. Share the hostess rewards in another conversation and ask, ask her, like, what's your goal? Some people don't have real big lofty goals. They think like, oh, well, $300 or $150 is good for me. Okay, cool. 
Um, and, and some others don't, <laughs> nor probably all of us, right? We didn't want that. <laughs> Obviously we wanted more. So the whole point is, is to really just build that relationship, value your hostess, make it an actual natural conversation, and then give her some gifts. Um, on the floor here, I've got a few things. Let me pick them up. I wanted to, my desk is really tiny. Okay, I'm like in a corner of my living room because you can see all the hot mess behind me. Um, okay, so hostess pack. So I wanted to show you, as I stated in the event, this is one thing we're gonna cover, and it's part of coaching. Um, you're coaching with the contents of this bag, believe it or not. So you wanna make sure that you take the time to think about, and again, write it down. Think about like if you were a hostess of this company, what would you want? You would want a free set of nails. And all of these things are suggestions. There's nothing in the color street, you know, PMPs, policies and procedures that says you have to do these things. I'm just sharing what I do and that what's been successful for me. So I ordered these bags from the swag store. These only go to my hostesses. Um, unless I'm like out of other bags. Um, but typically this is reserved for my hostess. It's branding right here. It says Color Street. It shows the polka dots. Like it's, you know, really what they would expect to get from you. You're a representative of the company. Um, so you wanna you know, kind of display that. So what's in this bag? First of all, I've got two catalogs and I've got one that says um, share with a friend. And then I've got one that says for you. And yeah, that's totally janky and it is totally against all of the OCD bones in my body, but I can't think of a better, more efficient way than a Sharpie marker than I can't think of one. And I'm not going to spend the time to the re of the ways I have thought of. So just to get their attention, because nine times out of 10, if you don't do something on the catalog, like a post-it note, maybe on the front or writing on it or little post-it tabs, whatever, they're just not, really not going to look at it. They're going to look at it and they're going to put it off to the side. These cost you money. So if you want them to look at them and help, help them get excited to help get their people excited, which equals PV for you orders, right? For your party, then you want to do something with this. Um, inside, I just kind of do, I do it differently and I did not do this from the get go. Okay. Um, you want to do just kind of like some notes, like bestseller, I circled Tokyo lights, clear as day. That's a must have, right? For me, like that's one of my faves. I put some stars next to some of my favorite sets. Um, I put like BOGO on the French, all, you know, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. There's more information on the back too about host rewards and all of that. So you can put any notes that you feel are valuable anywhere in the catalog. Something else you wanna do is you wanna put a label on the back in this blank space, that's what the blank space is for, is with your information. These are just Avery labels. Like I legit just made them on avery.com or if you have Microsoft Word and you wanna use that or whatever, then you can just put all your information on there. If you're not tech savvy, um, you can buy them on Etsy. But, or just make yourself some, okay? Um, so that you wanna have a label on the back and that's included in the bag. I also, just because, keep in mind, I've been doing this six months, okay? You don't have to have all this like cute stuff, but I like cute stuff. So if I like cute stuff, guess what? I think other people like cute stuff and I want people to feel valued again, remember that. So I got these, these are like little wax paper cookie bags I got from Michaels. Um, you don't have to do this. I mean, you could just put it all in a bag. So what's in here, this is our little gift and I have the opportunity brochure because Guess what? Yes, it's in here in the catalog. If you didn't already know, it is in the catalog. It's right back here and it talks about how um, to become a stylist. It's right next to the host rewards. So conveniently located. Good job, Color Street. Um, but I put it in here twice because why? Because I want them to see it twice because ultimately the goal is people to join my team. That is what I want and I don't want it to seem pushy, but if I can give them information more than once, I'm, I'm going to do that. Um, so here, there's really no other good place to put a sticker. So I put it just right on the front, which is kind of tacky, but hey, I do it out of necessity. And then in here, I do the same thing. I go, wow, $129. Oh my gosh, read this about Mr. Park. It's so inspirational. And I'm not just going to give this hostess pack to her and be done with it. I'm going to tell her I'm going to either deliver or mail her hostess pack. If I have someone that lives close to me, um, I'm going to take the extra effort and the extra customer service to drive to her house and drop it off. And I'm going to coordinate that 
again, through a back and forth conversation of what works best for her. Um, you know, and I ask her, would you like me to deliver this or mail it to her? Some people are weird and they don't want you to come to your house. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Um, so ask her what she wants. Okay. Um, another thing that's other things that are in this bag is a free set. I try almost hundred percent of the time to give Tokyo lights. Okay. That was my first set that I got is what hooked me and it is our number one bestseller. So why not? That is why you want to stock up ladies on these while they're in stock. Okay. I probably have like 15 cents. Um, that's probably not even enough now that I just said that out loud. Also things in the little bag. Um, obviously my business card. Okay. So I have my business card. My light is awful. Um, on the back, it has my VIP group information. Chances are they're already a member, but just in case they're not, I also put a nail file, a cuticle pusher, and a little hair tie. Like these things change, but that's kind of like my go-to just because I feel like it makes them feel extra special. Um, and it's not just like, okay, here's your catalogs and order forms. Go, go do my work for me. No, like I'm not about that. I want them to feel um, like I value them because I do. All right, so that is really what's in the host pack. It's not a lot. You can add way more stuff um, if you would like. But one extra thing that I did is I created this flyer on Canva myself on Etsy. I actually had purchased one on Etsy, um, but the lady wouldn't update it since I promoted. Uh, I wanted my new rank on there and she wouldn't update it. So I was like, well, screw that. I'm gonna make my own, rude. So I did. Um, so anyway, so on one side it has the hostess rewards and it has my phone number down at the bottom and my rank so that they can kind of, that's another seed you're planning about recruiting. Um, you thought this was about nail bars, didn't you? <laughs> it's always about recruiting. Okay. And then on the other side, you want to have, um, your recruiting information. So like join my team, just like a little blurb that they can read. Okay. But really it's eye catching about the hostess rewards. So that is what is in the hostess pack. And that is part of your coaching. You're going to say, or they're, say they're going to want it to be delivered in this cute little bag. Awesome. What, what day would be best? Or is it okay if I just drop it off on your porch? Give them an option, one or the other. Options you control, but give them choice, if that makes any sense. Okay? Because that makes them feel like really empowered um, and valued. Um, so you want to do that. And then when you drop it off, you're going to say, hey, I dropped off your hostess pack. I want you to really pay attention to this and this, hostess rewards and the catalog maybe. Share that with a friend. Plus, don't forget to share, uh, to put those nails on that you got and share them with everybody. I'm like, text everybody, blast it all over social media, blah, 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 right? Um, so that's kind of part of the hostess coaching packs and verbiage is really just naturally what you would have a conversation from. There are some resources like particularly Monica Arce, if you saw the training that Ashley posted in our group, um, she has verbiage that you can take just to have that conversation. Hers is a little wordy uh, for me. So maybe you just want to take snippets of that. That's my advice. That's what I do. So I take snippets of that. And, and like I said, break it down into a real conversation. Um, okay, so then moving on to resources. We haven't even started this bar yet, right? But this is what you need to know ahead of time. There are so many resources out there. Number one thing that I found was if I were in a VIP group, which I was in Ashley's before I became a stylist, I just kind of like looked at what she talked about and what information she shared and what graphics and photos she shared. And guess what? I just saved all those suckers to my phone. And just like Ashley had mentioned the other day, I had albums. Um, in my phone labeled as hostess, nail fees, whatever, um, recruiting, I have an album for that. And then um, also notes. So in the notes section, I would have like all my information about that out. Since then, I've tried really hard um, to get off of my phone. I sit in front of the computer a lot of the day um, and I have that luxury to do that. I know many don't. So if the phone works for you, do the phone. For me, I just am more inclined to work on the computer. So I have all these things saved in like Google Drive for me particularly. Um, so you just got to figure out a way that works for you. I recommend talking to your upline. And if I am one of your uplines, please message me because I have tons of nerdy tech stuff on Google that I can hook you up with. Um, or if you're anybody, whoever, I'll share it with everybody. Um, okay. So other things that you want to find resources from besides your upline or how you found out, or maybe you were a guest at a nail bar and you've seen how one works, like go back to that group. If it's still open, which chances are it is, go back and look through and see how they ran the party. In addition to that, 
there are some fabulous ladies in our company. Uh, number one, Monica Arce, like we all know, Ashley's fangirling her, so am I. Like, I want to be her with her cute little boy and her hair and everything. Her house, have you seen her house? Do you know how I know what her house looks like? Because she brands herself and she takes photos of herself and puts them in nail bars. Like, that's a stretch. Don't feel like you have to do that right away. I myself just barely did that like two weeks ago. So make me make that a stretch goal for you in the next few months. But look at her resources. If you're not in Monica's mock nail bar group, ask your upline, okay? Or go search it on Facebook and ask to join. It is by far the best nail bar that I've ever seen. Another one that I used to use um, before I found her um, was BAM. So B-A-M, there is a website that is free. If you just enter your email, you can get lots of resources. So write that down, BAM, B-A-M. You wanna search that on Facebook. It's like BAM Party Girls or BAM Party Resources, something like that, um, or talk to your upline. All of these things um, are phenomenal when it comes to types of things to get your party goers engaged. And that's the difference. We all know, we've all learned, and if you haven't yet, I'm gonna tell you that um, you want engagement in your VIP group, right? Well, your nail bar is a group too. And although it is a group for a short period of time, you want that engagement to be high. You want your hostess, this just goes back to coaching a little bit, you want your hostess to um, be the, like be interacting more than you. Like, yeah, you're gonna go in and schedule posts, um, and if you don't know how to do that, talk to your upline or Google it, just Google it. Um, you're gonna schedule posts of information to tell people about Color Street and show them awesome nail fees and give them inspiration, tell them a little bit about our company and our opportunity. But your hostess needs to be the one tagging her friends, welcoming them to the group, um, which is all of these things are included in that checklist I posted earlier today. Um, and then last but not least, something if, I know there's a few of you that are not brand new, um, something I just have been re-dabbling in is Post My Party. It's actually an app, I don't know if anybody uses it, put it in the chat if you do, maybe you could help me out. But um, Post My Party basically is this, like something when you're, you've got your feet under you, right? Um, it posts for you. Like you set up your whole party ahead of time without a group, and you post, you, you choose what day you want it to post, what time, et cetera, what photo, what video, what links, blah, blah, blah. You set this all up ahead of time. Then all you do is link, get the URL, the web, the web address from your Facebook group and put it in Post My Party and like link it and then you walk away. And the neat thing about that is like, I have a lot of teachers on my team. I myself work for the schools or hey, maybe you're working right now and not, spoiled like me and have summers off, but I know there's going to be a point where I have to go back to work full time and I need something to save my butt. And that's going to, hopefully that's going to be the answer. So those are all the resources that I would suggest. Again, your upline or a party that you've been in, bam, Monica RC. And then if you're kind of techie or you're just like going to go for it, check out post my party. Okay. And if you want to message me individually about post my party, feel free to do so. All right, so we've talked about our why, we've talked about our coaching, we've talked about resources. Now the timeline. I'm gonna go ahead, for those of you that did not um, see the timeline, I'm gonna share that, um, share my screen with you. All my, let's see, okay. There's post my party, but we're gonna go to the Google Drive. So like I said, I'm a nerd and I have everything like color coordinated and blah, blah, blah. Here's the one I'm talking about, you guys. So this is a checklist I made. Feel free if you get access to this to make your own copy. You, you hopefully can't edit this. Um, make your own copy and change this for you. This is just what works for me, okay? Um, and so it's basically as soon as you book, you wanna get that date in your calendar. Like today I booked a party for August. I don't care if it's not until August. I'm getting a date and I'm putting it in my calendar because one, I'll forget and then I'll lose potentially hundreds of dollars in sales, customers, stylists, et cetera. Um, and two, you want them to know that you're a professional, you know, you're a business person, you're running a legit business and you're organized, even if you're not. Okay, so asking for a date and having that volley back and forth right away, even if it's a month or two out, 
get that date, okay? And then give them their host pack right away. I choose to give them a free set of nails ahead of time. Yeah, they could totally stiff me. Yeah, they probably could have a party with just like two orders that doesn't qualify. That's a risk that I didn't take when I was a brand new stylist. So you might not want to take that risk if you are. But at this point, I've had tons of parties where I'm the hostess, tons of free nails. I'm willing to take that extra step and that risk for me and my business. But that's a decision that you have to make for yourself. But whatever it is, whether you're giving them that free set of nails at all or on the front end or on the back end, send them something. Send them something, again, that's showing them that you're serious that you mean business and that you're a professional and organized. That's the, that's what you want your hostess to see. Okay. And also that's going to make them more excited about the party because they're going to have things in hand, um, to look at catalogs and all the things that I showed you. All right. Then you're going to want to, you know, fast forward, let's say we're talking about my August party. We're going to make a, about 10, seven days, depending on my schedule, right? When I have time to work on this, I'm going to create the link in the VO. I'm going to make the Facebook group. I'm going to preload a, a video, an application video. I'm going to, I preload a removal video too. Um, some pictures. I like to upload at least like 30, 40, 50 pictures to an album. Um, and I like to do that because you know how you are when you're on Facebook, right? Like unless at least I am, I like to scroll. I like to like click, click, click. If there's more pictures, I'm going to keep scrolling or swiping until the end. So you never know what's going to pique somebody's interest. So make sure that you give a lot of different types of nail fees, not just the stock photos from the website. Those are kind of meh. They're not that great. Um, go on. The, there's tons of graphics groups on Facebook that your upline can add you to. Or I literally Google color street and then the name of the color like Charleston blush. And I'm like, okay, there's five for that color, five for that color, blah, blah, blah. And then I just kind of randomly select and put them in an album. And so that's what I do before I add the hostess. Okay. I also put like a cute cover photo. I do all of those things, add the description, all of this stuff um, before I add anyone, including my hostess, because I want her to feel special. Again, do you get the point? Um, I don't want her to feel like I'm like, behind and scrambling. Um, and how did I learn that? Because I was behind and scrambling once and I didn't want, I didn't want that to be my image ever again. Um, so it just takes a little bit of work on the front end and it's worth it. It will pay off. I promise. Plus when you do like the same, like five things, when you set up a nail bar, you're going to continue to do those same five things again for the next one, for the next one, for the next one, you'll get in a pattern where it's going to be second nature. Just like driving, right? When we first started driving, it was like, oh my gosh, what do I have to check? My hands and my, my, wind, my mirrors and blah, blah, blah. Now you just get in and you're like, you don't even know how you got to Target. That's where my car goes. Sorry, that's not where your car goes. But you don't even know, right? Like it's autopilot. You will get there, okay? But you won't get there if you don't start. So you have to just book at least one, I would say two, um, and start them. Not the same time, but like book one for a week and then a week later. Um, okay off my soapbox. Um, so then anyway, so when you get closer to the party, you're going to start to coach them on inviting. Um, everybody has a different method of that. Some people say like reach out individually, which is what I prefer to do. Um, I want the people who want to be in the group there. Other people I know, and it's your business, you choose what you want, try different things and see what works better for you. Um, or ask your hostess what they think would be better for their friends. Um, so other people what's going to say is just mass add everybody in. I mean, you need to add a lot of people if you're going to get a big, you know, RSVP to the, the event and, and to the group. But anyway, you, t you pick your school of thought, whether you individually and you only have like 20 people or you mass add everybody and you have 50. You pick or let your hostess pick. You're going to do that. And then you are going to encourage, just like Ashley shared the other day, and this is a tip that is gold. Your guests aren't your guests. They're really your hostess's guests. And you, you know, if you're invited to something and you just see posts from this random stylist or consultant or whatever, you're not going to pay as much of attention as you would if it were your friend or your cousin or your sister or whatever it is. So make sure that they're working. Plus that keeps you able, like 
that allows you time to balance your VIP group and balance thanking your customers and mailing out orders or whatever it is you're doing. Hello, probably uh, children and husbands and jobs too, right? So making your hostess do the work. Don't feel like you're burdening her. She's getting the free nails, okay? Make her work for it. And then as those people join the group, you want to make sure you coach your hostess to in, not invite, um, to welcome every single person that joins personally. Um, have them, teach them how to tag. Some people don't know how to tag people on Facebook. Tell them how to. If you don't know how to, Google it. It's really easy. <laughs> um, anyway, all these things, just as you can see, just kind of follow this. And then what I choose to do is I choose to have a, um, I choose to have a one day party. I didn't used to do this. I used to kind of do like a week to two weeks and it was like a mini VIP group. It didn't have a deadline and some people need a deadline. Like pretty much everybody needs one um, to know like, okay, the party is on this day and it's ending on this day. Um, those are things that you need to consider um, your style. For me personally, like I said, I have a one day party. I um, schedule it so that way my hostess knows, yes, this is your party day. And I treat it as if it were a real in-home party. And that's something that I learned from the BAM party resources. Um, if you were to come in to a real party at my house, I would welcome you and say hello, make you, um, you know, a drink, get you some, you know, show you where the food is, make you feel welcome, that sort of thing. So that's what we need to emulate in Facebook, okay? So that's really important. Think about that. Think about what do you do when you enter someone's home? How, what makes you feel comfortable? Or what do you do when people enter your home? And make sure that your hostess is welcoming those people in that way, okay? And then last but not least, the party day comes. And you should, if you follow the party format that I like to do, you should have some posts scheduled. I choose to wrap, do rapid posting where I say the party is at 7 p.m. and I let them know ahead of time, which is this is what Monica RC does um, and the BAM party girls, this is what they do. They say it starts at 7 p.m. Well, the first post, 7 p.m., it's like drop a gift, blah, blah, blah. Tell me how you know the host is whatever it is. Something that they're gonna comment on because it is kind of fun um, to kind of see, you know, different funny memes or gifts or whatever um, and interact with the, the group that is in the party. Um, and then I just, I schedule them every five minutes. That's what I do. And I have done it two ways. I've done it for 30 minutes where I only have like the highlights of Color Street, um, you know, something to welcome them, something about our uh, nail set, something about hostess rewards, something about the opportunity, something about our foundation sets and how we give back. Um, and then I go live. And then maybe I go live because the website's low and I need to do a shot my stock or I promise the hostess a bingo or whatever it is that I decide. Um, that's one way. Another way, and if you go to Monica RC's resources, you'll see is that she doesn't ever go live really. Um, maybe in the beginning, just to kind of get people excited and, you know, boost the group. But she does an hour of every five minute post. Um, I myself am going to be trying that in July. Um, and so if anyone else does that, let me know, give me your feedback. Um, I'd love to hear it. But basically that way you don't have to do much but comment and like all of the interaction that's gonna come in. But guess what? You are gonna train your hostess to do the same thing. So that way the people feel like they're really you know, paid attention to and um, are interacting. Something else that I learned from Monica RC is to give a ticket for every interaction that they do from the beginning of that group all the way through the end. The crazy thing that she says, if you've watched her video, she's like, I don't keep track. No, I don't write tickets. I don't like really do it. It's kind of on, uh, you know, on our system, you know who's been interacting, you know who to reward. And yeah, maybe that's not the right thing to do, but hey, it's gonna save your butt. It's gonna save you a lot of time. Now, if that doesn't sit well with you, then you can get tickets. Like I, that's what I used to do is I used to have like these tickets. I have them right here on my desk and I literally would sit there and every time someone would comment, I'd write their name. Okay, if you have a pop-up party, you're not gonna be able to keep up, which is what you want. Um, so consider both options and you decide what's best for you. I myself am going to not write tickets anymore and I'm going to see how it goes <laughs> just because I, I can't keep up, um, which is a good thing. 
Um, and then you're going to close that party. You're going to, um, you know, thank them for coming that night, coming, you know, virtually. And um, you're going to tell them, you know, don't worry if you miss the party, you can go back through the post. Then the next day, you're going to say thank you so much. And you're going to say, you know, today's the last day to shop. Make sure you have all your orders in by whatever time it is, 9 p.m., 10 p.m., midnight, whatever you want to do. And then remind them that's their last chance to get tickets into the drawing for the free nanny, which is technically the day after the party. And then one more day is what I choose to do is have um, that be the giveaway day. Um, so that way they kind of have a chance. We have lives, right? Not everybody is going to, um, you know, make every post or be there the whole half an hour to an hour of posts sitting there on their phone or their computer. That's just not logical. So you do want to give some wiggle room and not be so rigid um, so that you get more sales and more interaction even after that party date. But be cautious depending on your hostess's goals. You don't want it to go too, too long either. Um, you know, customers don't like that. Hostess don't, hostesses don't like that either. So that is the timeline and the closing of the party. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up to questions. And then, like I said at the beginning, I'm gonna go ahead and um, show you, if I can, um, how I set the party up and some things that I like to do. Um, but that is optional. So if you don't need that, feel free to go ahead and leave after questions or anytime. Um, but if you're very brand new, my husband isn't home from work yet, so I have a few extra minutes and I'd be happy to do that for you. So if you'd like to ask a question, you can type it in the chat or you can unmute yourself. I do see a question from Danette. What's the BAM Party Girls? So the BAM Party Girls is a group of Color Street stylists that have a collective Facebook group. The BAM stands for their names, which I can't remember right now, but it's three ladies. Um, and they've compiled free resources. They have a website where you can go and download. You just get, literally just put your email address in. Um, and I don't ever get any spam from them, so it's kind of nice. Um, I think they're just trying to keep track of where their resources are going. Um, yep, and that's it. And then it gives you a party guide, um, which I definitely can show you if you if you need that. But just go on Facebook and Google, or not Google, <laughs> Google is in our head. Just uh, search using the search bar at the top of Facebook, whether you're on your phone or the computer, it's both places. Just put B-A-M party and I'm sure it will come up. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? So my party is one day, yes. I invite and get started kind of like Monica Snellbar, yes. But the official party is only one day, yes. And that's how I market it as well. I let them know, um, you know, it's just a one day party, one hour really of your time um, to get the information all about Color Street out to your friends and family to get them to love it as much as you do. You know, I'm talking to my hostess. Um, yes, we'll start the group a few days. So that gives you time for you and your friends to invite. Um, and we'll have an early bird special, but the actual party will only be one day. And then, so give or take, like my attention to that group is maybe like five to seven days max. Um, but really the party is only one day. That's a good question. Do I always shop my stock? No, I actually never shopped my stock until out of stocks happened. If you're a brand new stylist, uh, last month, well, in May, we had literally nothing on the website. Uh, well, we had some things. St. Patrick's Day in May. Super, super uh, exciting sets in May. Um, but so what I did instead is I offered, because I was able as a stylist to shop and I had some stock, I offered it there. Then what I did is when uh, restocks or when I was able to, to order from that stylist link, I went and like Ashley shared the other night. If I sold 10 sets for her, I went and I went back and ordered 10 sets for myself to replenish myself. But then she's getting that, that credit um, on her link. That's a good question. Anything else? Uh, let's see if I go live, what do I do? Okay. So what the BAM, what I've pr previously have done that has been very successful for me, um, I followed the BAM model, which is 30 minutes of posts, then a live video. That live video, what I would do is um, I had an interaction game. They call it the adulting game. And it's basically like, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's like random stickers like, um, I didn't have Top Ramen for dinner, or I didn't binge on Netflix all day. Like things adulting wins, right? 
Um, and I would post that and have some people pick. And on that game, I they could win free shipping or a two, accent nail two pack or um, or booking a party with me was a price. And that's how I got another booking, another booking, which is kind of a whole nother training. Um, but what I would do is I would announce the winners of that game, not necessarily like my free Manny game or giveaway for that goes the whole length of the party, but I would announce those few winners that would do two things. It would get people really excited about winning prizes and they would want to order. Um, when I first started, what one of my prizes was, was $5 off your order. Guess what? You have to order to get that price. <laughs> so that's what I want, right? I want, and that's what my hostess wants. But then that's just because I didn't have a lot of things to give away in the beginning. And that was something that was really affordable for me to just turn around. And maybe that's, maybe that would work for you. Maybe it wouldn't. Um, and then I would also do a demo if I could. I would, you know, if I, if I had to, I love, Hello. my husband's home now. Um, if I had to, um, change my nails, like, and it lined up with a party, you bet I would do that. I would remove or apply depending, or if not, I would just open a twosie you guys. And I would just put something like right over. I would try to coordinate something. I would just put it right over like an accent nail just to show them. Um, but you don't have to do that necessarily, but those are great ideas. You could always just post your own, you know, application video. Um, when do I close the party? So I, depending on sales and my hostess's goals, that's another volley back and forth conversation that I have with the hostess. I let them know, hey, you're at $260. You know, your goal is 300. Let's keep it open one more day. All you need is basically one more order, one or two more orders. Um, that just kind of depends on the situation. Um, but I like to close it pretty much immediately. I don't want it to drag out because I have other parties to get to. And I don't want my hostess to feel like it's hard and that it's like ongoing because I also want that hostess, remember, to be a stylist on my team. So I want to make it seem as like uh, streamlined as possible. Okay, question. When you earn hundreds of dollars worth of nails, what do you do with them? Yes, that's so nice. I give them away. Um, I give them away. I sell them for cash. Yes, I do. Um, and that is fabulous. That's money right back in my pocket. That is hundred percent pure profit. But I, I also do give them away. Like I said, in the beginning, I give my every single hostess just for booking with me gets a free set. And I have only got burned like once, honestly. And it wasn't that bad. It wasn't like intentional, just her party just kind of flopped it. It just wasn't, she wasn't active in her group and nobody came to the party. She didn't invite well, blah, 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 all these things. So other than that, everybody's been um, really good, and I've made sure to build relationships with my hostesses very well, so that they don't burn, they don't want to burn me. <laughs> are there any other questions? Those are awesome questions. Okay, here comes one. If you're having all the party guests order online, how do you offer things like five dollars? Ooh, good question. So I just refund them, like, and that, and they'll ask that, like, oh, how do I redeem my price? And I'll I'll message them, hey, you earned free shipping or you earned uh, $5 off your order. When you place your order, let me know and I will refund you the $3 shipping or five bucks or whatever you wanna, you wanna offer. And I just do it via Venmo if they have that or if you don't already know, Facebook has Facebook Pay, which is right in Messenger, which is my primary contact with most of the people obviously that are guests. And I can just literally send them $3 and then they have to hook up their PayPal account or a debit card to receive that $3. So that makes it really easy for me. And trust me, they will do the legwork to get the $3. Um, okay. Can my party stay open? Well, hello, Sabrina. Um, can my party stay open while there's another party going on? Yes. You can have as many parties as you want open at once. It's really it doesn't matter. So I have lots of parties open right now. I have two battles going on. So that's four party links plus my VIP group at, at this second. So I have five party links in my open parties. So you can just keep adding, keep opening. Yep. Good question. All right. Are there any other questions? Thanks for joining me on a Saturday. Here's, here's another one. Okay. How many parties should we be working up to every month to be successful? 
That is a hard question. Um, I can give you some advice, but really you're the only person that could answer that. Um, I would say, depending on what your goals are, like how much PV do you want? How much sales do you want? How many teammates do you want to recruit? Um, obviously, the more you have, the more people you'll be in front of, but you want to be very cautious not to overwhelm yourself, okay? Um, I would say like one or two parties a week is, is a lot for a newbie, but I would say that if you're ambitious, do it. It's going to pay off. I did it. And I honestly, like, if someone wants to book, I can do a party a day, technically. Like, I don't do that. But I could, you know, because I only have a one-day party that I have to actually be active on that group. Um, so you just want to maybe schedule your working days. Like, maybe your husband works certain days and um, maybe you're home with the kids and you don't want to do parties that day. Or maybe, um, you know, you have, I don't know. Your, your, your days off from your regular job are, you know, Saturday and Sunday. So you really want to maximize the weekend. So maybe you only offer them on the weekends. I say you be in control of that. Um, like I said earlier, choose the options for your hostesses, but let them still have a choice. Do you keep track of all sales and expenses? Uh, I try to. And if so, do you, what do you use? And oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Um, so I use a spreadsheet. So they're just asking like, how do you keep track? I um, use a spreadsheet that I purchased on Etsy. It's super overkill. I did it out of necessity because I needed to file last year's taxes, um, 2019. And I did business for just one month in 2019. So I felt like, ah, I was scrambling and I didn't want to create a spreadsheet of my own. So if you just Google or search on Etsy, um, like color street business, you will see tons of resources that that spreadsheet was $20, I think ish, which is kind of pricey. But if you think about it, it's a write off. And also, um, it can, um, be yours forever. So that's, that's nice. Um, I didn't, I don't use all the sheets if you find that one. Like I only use like a profit loss sheet and um, I track my business expenses by categories, but that's it. That's all I do. But yes, like every, like you wanna keep your receipts for everything if you're not already doing that, um, make sure. But contact your tax consultant for uh, proper advice because that is surely not who I am. <laughs> okay, what days seem to be, to work best for ending parties? Um, I'm not sure about ending parties, but like the, and Ramsey, I'm sorry, I see your question, I'll get to that in a sec. I don't know about like closing the party per se, but like for my one day party, I think that's what you're asking. I, it depends, like sometimes Saturdays don't work well. Like I try not to schedule things on Saturdays weeknights seem to be pretty good for me like earlier in the week um, and most of my people but again I give that choice to my hostess and I kind of like let her decide what she thinks is best for her and then uh, let's see that question was do you create the party page on Facebook for the days leading up to the party or just for the day of the party very good question so that's what I wanted to kind of show you so let me um, let me see I don't think actually sharing my screen helps with that. Um, so basically here's what I do. I create the group, like, actually, yeah, let me show you the checklist just one more time for a visual. So um, right here, seven to 10 days before the party. So I wanna give myself and my hostess enough time to get set up and get enough people in the group. So um, I'm going to give, in order to give my hostess enough time to invite, I have to give myself enough time according to my personal schedule to set up all these things. So I create the party ahead of time in the VO. So I have the shopping link. Then I create the group on Facebook and then, you know, preload, like I mentioned earlier. And then about three to five days, depending, depending on my schedule and that sort of thing, um, depending on where we're at in the hostess conversation, I uh, give the hostess access to that group. So it could be, Typically, I shoot for three days before the actual party date for her um, to invite, and then I run that early bird special. The early bird special that I offer is um, you get three accent nails. If that's too much, do two, or if that's too much, just put everybody's name in a hat, maybe, um, and give them a ticket if they have an early bird um, order. 
Um, and then that kind of gets the ball rolling and gets everybody kind of excited before the actual party day. So three-ish days before the party, the day of the party, and then two-ish days after. So it's about a week. Um, what do you name the groups for party? Yeah, don't put Color Street in the group name. Uh, that's against our PMPs. What I usually do is just like Ashley's Nail Bar, like totally boring. Or you could make it a cutesy name. Um, I've done that before. But no, I just usually do like Ashley's Facebook Nail Bar or Ashley's Virtual Nail Bar or whatever. Yeah, just don't put Color Street in it. Um, okay, I think that's all the questions. Did I miss something? Thanks for, for joining me. <laughs> I hope this helps. I know it's probably like way too much information, um, but I would say like, please reach out to your upline or me if you have um, any questions on where to find these resources. I, to help you guys, I'm gonna go back to the event and I'm gonna go ahead and share all the things I've talked about, like the BAM, the website, the BAM, the Facebook group, Malika RC, even though Ashley already shared it, just I think maybe having it all in one place might be helpful. So I'm going to go do that right now. Hopefully that will help. And you guys have a good evening. Thank you so much for joining me.